What's going on, people? This is Tashir Rase for Computer Music Academy, and welcome to CMA Answers. Today, I'm going to answer a question for Zach Fried Rice on YouTube. He wants me to explain warping in Ableton Live. Now, this can be a very long and detailed conversation, but today, I'm just going to give you the basics. First off, what is warping? It's a process that allows you to take an audio clip that has its own tempo and make it fit to your project, which has another tempo. We're going to be using this clip right here and actually this section of the clip. Just a very basic drum loop that's actually kind of funky. The goal is to get that at that tempo to fit our project at this tempo. Yeah, sounds like a mess right now, but we will fix it. There's a couple of things I need to do to set this up. First, I'm going to click here, control E, click down here and hit control E again. This separates this particular section from the rest of the song. And you can see it down here in the clip view. Me personally, I only like to see the audio that I'm working with. So I'm going to go to the right, right click and click crop sample. Now. This is our clip. The next step is turning on warp. Keep this in mind. Just because you've turned on warp doesn't mean that your clip has been warped. It's a process. Let me show you how it's done. You see these gray arrows pointing down? These are transient markers. Transient markers indicate transients in your audio. Transients are basically noises. In this case, a kick drum, snare, hi-hat, double kick, and so on. They're right above every noise and every note in this clip. In order to warp it correctly, I want to get rid of this air at the beginning of the clip. I'm going to double click the transient marker above the kick, and now it turns blue. Now it's a warp marker. Warp markers are what makes warping possible. Right click on the warp marker and go to set 111 here. Now, when I start the clip, it's going to start from the kick drum. The space is still there, but it's very easy to get rid of that. I'm going to cut on loop and grab the left loop bracket, drag it over to one. And I'm going to grab the right and bring it down to about right there. So once again, Come over to the right, right click, crop sample, and that's our clip. Perfect. The last thing we need to do is come over the 111, right click it, and now you'll see several options for warping. If you're dealing with audio that has been programmed by a drum machine, computer, or at least played to a metronome, you want to use warp from here straight. The reason is, the tempo is less likely to drift as it may if it were played by a human. Since I'm pretty sure this was made in the 60s or the 70s and played by a live drummer, we're going to use warp from here. Click that. Now, our clip sounds like this. The reason it sounds like that is because it matches our tempo. See how easy that was? Once again, this is a very basic tutorial on warping. We'll go deeper in other videos. Thanks to Zach Fried Rice for the question. And if you have questions of your own, leave them in a comment down below. Please like and share the video if you haven't already. And for everything dealing with computer music, join us at computermusicacademy.com. See you next time.